13 to 13. Some defensive changes behind Mac Morgan. You saw Leanne Good there getting the start at second in place of Alyssa Washington. That one misses low, but that's that's what you're going to see from Mac Morgan. She's a drop ball pitcher. She's going to keep the ball at the knees, challenge low in the strike zone. You see good there, as you said, Alex, getting the start at second base. She's going to utilize the defense. You're going to see, especially the dirt, get challenged behind Mac Morgan. And she induced about a dozen ground balls against Colorado State. As that one curls foul off the bat of Maya Davis, one of the most talented young players in the nation, reigning Sun Belt Freshman of the Year and All-American. A lot of speed. Absolutely. They won the Golden Shoe Award last year, led the nation with 52 stolen bases. She's only had five attempts this year. This one chopped. That's wow. unable to beat out the throw from Morgan. One away. It's a close play. Another ground ball. Well, if you're a ground ball pitcher, you got to be able to field your position well. Mac Morgan does it. The quick release. That was a tough call at first base. And speaking of, it looks like we will have a challenge right off the bat. Yeah, to the naked eye, I, I thought she beat out the throw. Home plate umpire Robert Gonzalez. Seen a lot of interesting challenges over the past 24 hours, where whether it's runners leaving early or a runner called out when potentially upon further review there, it looks a lot closer than it first appeared. This will be the best vantage point. Ooh. Yeah, I think that this is a, this should be a safe call. I, I'm going to be shocked if this isn't overturned. Again, there is a call on the field. The runner is out. There has to be enough evidence to overturn the initial call. I think it's there, Alex. It appears so. And that would be a big decision early on. We talked about Davis's speed. For an offense that has been admittedly, according to Jerry Glasgow, struggling certainly much, much more than he expected at this point. As they continue to look at the review, it's a Louisiana team that built a really tough schedule early on in the hopes of potentially hosting a super down the road as the call is overturned. Challenge successful. Davis safe at first. Offense so far, as we said, struggling a bit. They've gone one and seven against ranked teams. Jerry Glasgow hoping this can spark something early here in Austin. Maybe saying, how did you miss the call in the first place? Regardless, that, the, that is what the challenge is for. Davis at first. Here's Maddie Hayden taking ball one. I think Robert Gonzalez pointing to the scoreboard to make sure everything is correct. And also directing traffic as Matt Johnson was over at third, Gonzalez directing the third base umpire Johnson over to second. He was stuck in a conversation with Jerry Glasgow. Okay. What a start. We've already got a lot going on. It's also a, a choice to use a challenge this early. It's the first batter of the game. And even if you win, you do not get it back. And Louisiana in business early here against Texas. Maddie Hayden with the hit. Proves to be a fruitful challenge because now you got two on and no outs. With a team like Texas, you got to take the early opportunities when you get them. Saw Stanford do that last night after a couple defensive miscues from Texas. See what Sam Rowe does, transfer from Florida. Start to see some aggressiveness. Early swings from Louisiana. Again, they're coming off that great year a season ago. Made their first trip to the Supers since 2016. Won more than 50 games. Jerry Glasgow said, listen, coming off that year and the talent we have coming back, 
he said this is as talented a team as he has ever had and that's saying something because his squads are usually pretty loaded but again seven and eight on the young season entering today One of one. Get three Texas pitchers coming into this one who had not allowed an earned run on the season. Mac Morgan, Estelle Check, and Sophia Simpson. Here's the bunt over to first base. Stewart on to first. First out of the game, but the runners advance into scoring position. A golden opportunity for the raging Cajuns here in the first to get on the board. Here is Samantha Grader, the spring Texas native. Morgan starting off behind to the first few batters. A little bit of a slow start, but we're She's being met with aggressiveness at the plate. Early swings by Louisiana. So you got to play smart. How you chip away at the zone early in the count. Well, with Davis's speed at third, a fly ball to the outfield. It's a pretty good shot of bringing home the first run of the game. Yeah, if they're able to strike first blood here, that challenge was key, pivotal. Texas's pitching staff as a team, top 10 ERA in the nation. Go, go, go. Chopper over to second. Davis will score easily, and Louisiana jumps in front in the first. It's heads up hitting right there. Hitting behind the runner, seeing that ball deep into the stance. And you mentioned it, Alex, knowing the speed of Davis on third, it doesn't take much to get that RBI, and that's exactly what Grader gets done. And again, Morgan starts off 1-0. Laney Crater, the batter, did not go around. Crater, a terrific pinch hitter throughout her career, came into the weekend as a career 350 hitter. Take strike one. Interesting to see how Texas responds emotionally, mentally today after their first loss of the year. And they will fall behind 2-0 as Laney Crater drives in a run for the Raging Cajuns. It's almost like we're seeing Mac Morgan just, it's too far over the wide of the plate. I mean, that is down the center of the plate, right at the knees. Staying in the strike zone, but just not challenging enough on the spots that are hit. With an aggressive Louisiana team taking cuts early, seeing the ball deep, they've done a nice job of keeping the ball on the ground, but hitting it hard. It has been a really interesting last 24 hours at this tournament. You yeah, had last night's game, you had the contest you did before yes. this that went to nine innings. Crazy. Colorado State out hit Stanford for most of that game. And I even remember you and Amanda talking on air, the Stanford Texas game, how it was just eerily quiet. Just the fact that the air just kind of felt weird. That was a very tense atmosphere, yes. postseason vibe. Yes. A lot of nerves from both teams, especially early on in that one. So here we go. Texas falling behind 2-0. Three hits here in the top of the first inning for Louisiana. Here's Alexa Langoliers. And again, a 1-0 count to begin against the Louisiana batter, Mac Morgan. Pitch number 20 of the inning on the way from the junior.
talked about the depth of the staff, the arms that Texas softball has the ability to go to. We saw Gutierrez last night against Stanford. She got challenged in the circle. Up, up, up. Estelle Check, a strong lefty arm. Sophia Simpson, one of the best off speeds I've seen in our game. And then you can't leave out that freshman. Kavan has just been a stud, a six footer that can hum it 70 miles an hour. I'm wondering if the original plan was to save Kavan for today, but they were forced to bring her in late in that Stanford game as this one turns foul. That's a good thought. Still doesn't take away the fact that this is a deep staff yeah. with a lot of options, depending on what situation they get into, how long Mac Morgan can stay in the circle here. She's getting tested early, challenged early. 2-2 two -two coming up with two away. Taken to center field, Bella Dayton backing up, backing up. That one drops off the track. The relay throw, not nearly in time. And how about Louisiana jumping out to the three nothing lead? I think this, Alex, is the offense that coach Jerry Glasgow talked about. Him just not seeing it yet, and it's starting to show up here in the finale of this tournament. One of the most talented teams he says he's coached at Louisiana. They have struggled early this season, but he knows the offense that he has on his hands. And boy, have they showed up early here against Texas. And you saw the wind just pushing that wow. one. Push. It looked like Dayton was going to have it. Yeah. And the next thing you know, it drops in. And Three Dayton, runs off four hits. Dayton's got a good read. Yeah. She is a tremendous center fielder. She's got a great jump on the ball. And this one just beat her. Swing and a miss. Throw over to third. Gets away. The runner heading home. Scott fires it. And she is safe. Four nothing. Close call. I will be shocked if this isn't challenged at home plate. A lot to unpack here. A miss throw. There was a little bit of a bobble at third. And I am really curious as to how this was not an out call. Her glove did not make wow. contact with her in time. The throw was there in time. That's an errant throw from Atwood to third base. And you're right, tag not applied in time. That's one of those classic instances, Alex, where you want to put the glove in front of the plate and allow her to slide into the glove. This is now back-to-back wow. -back games. There have been some close calls for Texas at home plate defensively that they have not come up with. Not for lack of effort, certainly. But now you're in a 4 nothing hole. Swing and a miss. One and two. You just feel like you're trying to get your breath from a tough loss last night, and all of a sudden you're getting, you're getting kicked in again right here early in the game. An inning ending strikeout, but Louisiana strikes first multiple times. Four runs off. Head to head, because that's all that these arms throw is low, 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 right at the knees. They're going to hammer low in the zone. A bit of a surprise. Thought we would see their ace, Sam Landry, who's had success in the past against Texas, but it is the transfer, Lecker, getting the start with Iowa through over 200 innings with an ERA of 4.21. One and one to Dayton. Hearing Jerry Glasgow just talk about the drop ball of Lecker. It's elite, says one of the most elite spins that he's seen on a drop ball. He said it's almost too good. The spin is almost too tight. And she works ahead, one and two. Little zip, mid to high 60s. Bella Dayton, meanwhile, a couple of hits last night against Stanford, scored twice. But of course was involved in that crazy play in the seventh inning on second when Jessica Allister issued a challenge that she left the bag early. 
and the Stanford head coach was correct. One away. Well, Mike White, after last night's loss, said, listen, that was the first time we had trailed all year. I'm disappointed that we basically gave them three or four runs. I wish we could have made some plays and gotten some big outs, but better to happen now than in the Supers or the Women's College World Series. Strike one to Mia Scott. Notice the pace of Lecker. She moves quick in the circle. She's going to challenge the rhythm of these hitters. Force him to move quickly. Corners playing in on Scott over to second. Two up, two down. This is where Texas is just going to have to slow the game down. Things are moving too quickly. A long first inning. Louisiana felt in control, and right now it's the same script. I just feel like the game is moving too quick. See what, yeah, Katie Stewart, the freshman does here, is a Texas offense that usually likes to work deep into counts. A couple of quick first, first outs. There's Stewart taking the 1 0. Stewart and Mitchell platooning over at first so far this year. The freshman getting the start in this one. It's been quite the freshman campaign. Had a huge three-run home run against Stanford when they faced each other in Florida. That was with two strikes. Towering home run against Tennessee back when Tennessee was number two team in the nation. Got a lethal bat. That one finds its way to left field. First hit of the contest for Texas. It's one way to slow the game down is to work your way on. A freshman in the three hole, one of the best offenses in the nation. That'll tell you all you need to know about Katie Stewart. Some of the biggest matchups Texas has had this season. She's come up clutch. And that means we will get to see the one and only Reese Atwood here in the first inning. Was on a record setting pace, nine home runs in her first 12 games. She is halfway to the Texas single season wow. record of 18. Set by Taylor Hoagland. Back-to-back -back hits now for Texas. Easy does it. That's what makes Reese Atwood so effective. This isn't a huge swing. It's fundamental. She shortens the barrel to the ball. She doesn't try and do too much. It's a drop ball right at the knees, and she doesn't overswing. It's a mature hitter. Making it look easy. Here is the freshman Victoria Hunter getting the start in this one. She came up big last night. Coming off the bench and delivering a pinch hit single in the sixth inning to put two on. She's hitting 667 this year. Close call. Close call. Impressive freshman class for Texas. They were already good, but what they added made them even better. Confident group out there. Well, Lecker is certainly throwing strikes. Texas has hit a few in their last two at-bats. One, two, two on, two away, and it misses. Hunter, one of those freshmen that's just a sponge to the game. Mike White brags about getting a, a chance to coach her and just what a delight she is to coach. A sponge for the game, wants to learn, a true student of her craft, an aggressive player, just wants to play the game, wants to get after it. A lot of the times, Alex, you see freshmen step into a program with this caliber and it can be scary. A little bit of stage fright may step forward, but not Victoria Hunter. She gets right into the mix. Showing good patience there, but before the 3-2 pitch, Jerry Glasgow comes out to talk 
to the home plate umpire, Robert Gonzalez. And then Sam Landry with a full count, two on two away, Victoria Hunter at the plate. And walked her to load the bases. Okay, explain that decision a little bit for me, Aaron. Also notice the pitch she just threw. That was a changeup. So you're really trying to disrupt the timing and the mindset of a freshman. Texas starting to develop a little momentum with two outs on the board, two back-to-back -back base hits. Now bases are juiced for Martinez. Yes, Vivi Martinez, the sophomore, takes strike one. Sam Landry, team leader in wins each of the last two seasons, 40 wins for her career coming into this tournament. Swing and a miss, fooled Martinez badly. Most mature arm they have, giving them the best innings throughout the first part of this season. Spots the ball well. She looked good yesterday, despite giving up a handful of free bases. She does a good job of managing the strike zone. Martinez over to short. That one dropped by Vasquez. That has been the story of Sam Landry's career so far. The defense yes. has constantly allowed unearned runs behind her in her starts. If Vasquez can just keep the ball in the glove here, choose a bag, any bag, right? Pick your poison, get your out, walk off the field, and she's unable to complete the routine play. Here comes Caden Henry with the bases still loaded, Texas on the board. So last year, Sam Landry held Texas to one earned run but they scored a number of unearned earlier this year. One earned to Stanford, one earned to Baylor, but five unearned combined in those games. Caden yeah. Henry hitting 567 now during her freshman campaign. Another freshman phenom for this team. Good diving effort. Hayden in left. Three freshmen in this starting order. And an amazing freshman arm that they can tap into on the pitching staff. Swing and a miss. And Sam Landry gets out of a jam, limits the damage to one run, 4-1 Louisiana.
First, Texas answered with one in the bottom half. So here's Leanne Good getting the start at second, trying to get going still. Fresh off the off-season wrist surgery, she is one for 10 so far on the year. Has to be a little bit frustrating for her knowing how yeah. great she was during that freshman campaign. It's a challenging part of injuries. Not just the physical part, but the mental part. Trying to get back into the groove, trying to play the game without any hesitation to that specific injury. Do you ever have to deal with that? Any type of oh, serious of injuries to the hands or the wrist? Dealt with a wrist injury, never had to have surgery, but specifically with hitting so much of your barrel control, so much of your swing speed, your bat speed has to do with the stabilization of that wrist. It can be hard. At 325 last year, 16 doubles. And Landry works her way back into a full count. Sam Landry, former teammate of Sophia Simpson on that talented Barbers Hill squad from Mont Bellevue a few years back. Not to mention that's on that bottom hand. So you're pulling down with a lot of force through the bottom of that bat. A lot of torque on that lower half, that lower hand. But delivers there, hit number two on the year for Leanne Good. That's gotta feel good, good. <laughs> Strike one up the middle. Similar to Reese Atwood's swing. This is just really smooth. Doesn't have to overdo it. Sees the ball where it's thrown, throws the barrel right through the zone. It's a fundamental cut. I think that's where you have to start if you're Leanne Good, is just don't overthink it. Keep it fundamental. Keep it short and sweet. Well, here is steady Eddie Ashton Maloney in that nine spot, hitting 400, and came up with a nice sliding grab in right field against Stanford. Boy, she looked good in the nine hole. Drops down the bunt perfectly. Unable to beat it out, but advances good to second. That was another close play at first. And Maloney reluctant <laughs> to leave the bag. You can see Kristen Zaleski over at first base. Wanting a chance to talk with Mike White to see if this is a call that they do want to have reviewed. How about that? Maloney's right. Maloney's right. It looked like there was a slight bobble hesitation by Landry that cost her. And it will be challenged and most likely overturned. I think this is the right call to go to the review, especially at this point in the game. You're still early, but you're down three runs. And a chance to have two on with no outs. Well, if the call is overturned, and again, the re replay angle we looked at a moment ago, it certainly seemed like she would be safe. That would mean five of the first nine Texas batters have reached against Louisiana pitching. Another look. Yeah, pretty clear. That's safe. I would be shocked if this does, does not get overturned. There's enough evidence there. I mean, that's clear. That'll be the second play that's been overturned at first base. The first two innings. That'll be the fourth hit off of Louisiana for Texas, the first time through the order. And Maloney just so key in that nine spot, turning over the order. Yeah, 400 average in yeah. the nine hole. It's essentially another leadoff. Quick review. Call is overturned. Maloney is safe at first. Leanne good at second. Texas in business with no outs here in the second. Again, it's, it's a team that three-run deficit, not that huge considering they're averaging double-digit runs per contest. 
And now threatening with Bella Dayton in the batter's box. Drops down the bunt. sure what was being communicated. But it looks like Valdez behind home plate was immediately on it. I don't know if there was contact made by Bella Dayton in the ball. A double hit potentially on the barrel, but it does appear umpires are going to get together to chat through this. Call initially appeared to be foul ball, but let's take a look at the replay as the umpires get together. Contact made. Yet. It could have potentially hit her as yep. well. I'm not seeing contact with the body unless what's being discussed is contact with the bat. Because the ball changed trajectory or at least died instantly. It was heading off to the right. It's heading towards the foul line and then turns back the other way. I don't even see contact with the barrel. Yeah. A second time, at least. I'm not sure what's being reviewed here or discussed. I'm not seeing contact with the body. I don't see secondary contact with the barrel, which would be a dead ball. I think this is a clean base hit. Another look. They continue to have a conversation with Mike White. Again, the situation in the foul ball. After all that, the situation stays the same with good over at second. Maloney at first. Well, that is foul for sure. What a break for Louisiana. I, I still am a little confused as to what we just witnessed. But regardless, they've just dodged a bases loaded situation here. No more reviews, please, <laughs> at least for another <laughs> inning or two. Oh, two. <laughs> Bella Dayton hitting 379. Good eye. It's a good pitch. Both parties doing their part there. It's a nice location by Landry with two strikes and a really high quality take there from Bella Dayton. Dayton over to second, snared. The quick turn to first by Langoliers. Thought about second, but got the sure out at first. Heads up play by Langoliers. She got tested yesterday at second base. Had a couple miscues defensively. This one, she had to be quick on her toes. Wanted to get the force out at second, but didn't see Vasquez there in time. Still gets the sure out at first. Mia Scott hitting 4-12. Takes strike one. Had her first triple of the year couple of days ago against this Louisiana squad. Landry working quickly and moves ahead 0-2. Sam Landry tossed a no-hitter already earlier this year, second game of the season against Cal. Been a terrific pitcher for them over the years. Ahead 0-2. It's the off speed. I didn't see her use that much yesterday. Mostly relied on east to west movement. One and two to Scott. He was one of the most patient hitters on the team. Chopped 
over to first. They go home. And she is out. Leanne Good tagged out at the plate. Louisiana's defense stepping up here in the second. This ball was almost hit too hard at Grader at first base. This is the right call. You do want to have your runners moving at second and third. You want to try and create some type of pressure on defense. The hardest play to make is to field it, throw it, and tag it correctly. The tag made by Valdez and Jerry Glasgow told us this week, Victoria Valdez is the best defensive catcher he has had in a long time. Made the play. It remains a three-run game. Here's Katie Stewart. Well, a moment ago, it seemed like Texas was going to have the bases loaded with no outs and Dayton on first. Wow. Wasn't the case. Now two on, two away. You and I are going to have to rock, paper, scissors on who. How about this? They make the throw to second. Wow. Oh, why would you do that? Texas, the beneficiary of that decision, four to two. Yeah, let's see how this unfolds. This is kind of a bait for Texas. They take off to try and steal, and the throw down to second. You want to see Vasquez immediately turn around after cutting that ball off and go home. Off the glove of Vasquez, the inning continues. We saw Colorado State fall for that yesterday. Yes. More often than not, you never make that throw correctly. Right. And even if you do, as you saw, Vasquez cutting across to cut that throw, but she gives too much credence to the runner at first base. There's just no reason why there should not be an out made in that instance. That or just give up the steal. May have been a moot point with the ball in the 5-6 hole. A great swing by Katie Stewart. Credit Ashton Maloney with the stolen base. Here is Reese Atwood. Tied her up a bit. You don't see that often this year. Leading the country in RBIs has reached in every single game so far. Homered in three straight. 0-2. Oh about the off speed? I think that that's going to have to be a pitch that shows up more for Landry the rest of this game. If she wants to be competitive against the best offense in the nation. Atwood slices one to right field. Here comes another Texas run. And the Longhorns have pulled within one. The throw home is stored. What hustle by the freshman, Katie Stewart. Big time. Notice where this ball is hit. High quality hitting. That is a such a mature piece right there. The fact that she can hit on the opposite side of the field gives way for not one, but two RBIs to cross home plate. Vasquez just caught on her heels, not even expecting a secondary run to cross home. We've talked about it so far through the first few weeks of the season. It has been a major storyline that is specifically what Reese Atwood worked on during the off offseason. Opposite field hitting, it pays off. And we got a brand new ball game. Victoria Hunter. And getting the start in this one, walked in the first inning, handed out souvenirs to the fans. Crowd back into it here at McCombs after Texas has rallied back from a 4-0 deficit we mentioned. For a team that scores this much, wasn't as big of a deficit as it would be to a lot of other clubs around the nation. Sam Landry coming out of the pen and entering the game on a 3-2 count. With two outs in the first inning, Denali Lecker started this one. Don't get me wrong, there's been some strong swings off of Landry, but her defense has not helped her. The support behind her just really hasn't been there. 
Miscommunication, stolen bases, errors. But strikes out the freshman to end the inning. However, Texas brings home. After that game time hit a moment ago, look at the comparison to a year ago. She's almost equaled the home wow. run numbers and the average up above 600. Phenomenal season continues immediately. Mac Morgan gets the first batter here in the third. Sam Rowe. And Morgan's looked like a bit of a different pitcher over the last yeah. now inning and a third. I would agree with that. A little more sense of urgency. Yeah. Working quicker, controlling the timing, getting ahead, sprinting to that first strike. Of course, right when you say that, misses with the first pitch ball to Samantha Grader, the junior career 290 hitter. Louisiana with four runs off of five hits. Four of those hits coming in the first for Texas. Four off of six, each team with an error so far. One and two. One past Martinez, who was playing closer to third. Base knock for Samantha Grader. Well, here comes Laney Crater to the plate, who drove home a run with a single in the first inning. Now six hits for Louisiana off Morgan. And two and a third. Louisiana in the midst of a stretch of 15 consecutive road games. They don't play back at home until March 20th. But continuing to battle here in their final day in Austin. That's the story for a lot of programs, just the onslaught of travel early in the year. It'd be exhausting. I think we forget at times that these are students. They are student athletes. Student comes first. Buses, flights, long nights. Got to fit in a practice every now and then. Plus, you got class. You got school to keep up with. It's, it can be a lot on these kids, especially early in the year. Yesterday, Tyler asked me what my favorite part of season is. And when I feel like I hit my, my stride, I'm like, um, May, when school's over. <laughs> Makes sense. When it's it just softball, that's when. It's a veteran group for Louisiana, kind of used to dealing with the rigors of the season, especially early on. More than 60% of the roster, upperclassmen. You do start to find your rhythm. You start to figure out what it takes to survive, to thrive, how to juggle it all. It's part of being a student athlete. Brooke Allistad settled in the box. The one-two on the way with a runner at first. Locked into battle right now with Mac Morgan. Sitlali Gutierrez and Sophia Simpson look on. To the bullpen with a stall check. Trailing is Mac Morgan offers up. One to another one fouled off. Right off the ankle. 
Saw Morgan throw a lot of pitches in the first inning, 29. Cruz through the second. Yeah, it was almost as if that first inning kind of just caught her on the heels. Since then, she's made some adjustments. She's looked much better, much more in control. Grabs that one on the second for one. Not in time for the DP. Alexa Two way now, Elistad over at first, and here's Alexa Langerleers who delivered the big RBI single in the first inning to make it 4 0 Louisiana. And Mac Morgan on the ropes a bit, but she has rebounded. That one misses for ball one. Langerleers just had an unreal freshman campaign a couple of seasons ago, 470. Most home runs by a Louisiana freshman in a decade, 13 homers. This year has left the yard twice so far and driven in eight runs. She struggled to get that call early. That one right at the kneecaps. Starting to get that for a called strike. When you're a drop ball pitcher, you want that pitch to be called. Over to short, Martinez fields it cleanly. And the top half of the third comes to an end. A single and hits and an error apiece for these two squads. And we're now joined by the head coach of Louisiana, Jerry Glasgow. Coach, your team got off to a hot start. What are you seeing out of your offense right now? Well, I mean, they got off to a good start. We just got to keep going. I, I thought we should have responded right there better than we did, but we got a hit. We just got to put something together. And I thought, you know, Texas emulated well, exactly what you got to do. They got We punch them in the nose a little bit, and they come back fighting hard. Now they punch us in the nose. Let's see if we can fight. That's what I'm looking for out of my ball club. Well, we've seen some changes in the circle. How are you managing your staff against a, an offense like Texas? Well, I, I'm, I'm trying to make it to May, you know, and Landry's pitched so good for us all year. And, and I thought she pitched good there. Our defense just got to make plays. And, uh, I, 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 you know, I told her before the game, like, if we got the chance to win, we'll go for it. But we're not going to burn you up here today. It's too long a season. And I thought she did what she could do. But on the other hand, when we get end up in a tie tie game right there, I don't want to uh, – we got to have other people step up, and it's time to let her uh, – be sure we got her safety first in mind. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jerry Glasgow's original starting pitcher, Denali Lecker, now back in the game for Sam Landry. She threw 17 pitches, left when it was scoreless, and here she returns in the bottom of the third. This is to Vivi Martinez. Interesting first few innings here. It is. The management of the circle has been interesting, but it could be one of those situations similar to what we saw from Mac Morgan where between innings, you're working in the bullpen, you're trying to clean up some of those miscues so you can re-enter the game, have a better head on the shoulders, a better approach in the circle. Although we saw Landry come in to be able to give that time to Lecker. She's got another opportunity here against Texas. She was charged with a run early, even though it was given up off Landry. That run was unearned. Martinez towering fly ball to left. Texas broke through with four hits in the last inning. So far off Lecker. Couple of hits and one walk as Sam Landry looks on. Here is Caden Henry. Freshman who's had such a terrific start to her career, but struck out in the first, and struck out two times last night against one of the very best pitchers in the country, Nyjah Kennedy. Did have a great throw from left field in that eighth inning that Texas Unfortunately for the Longhorns, could not register the out on. Into foul territory, oh. diving and unable to make the grab is Hayden. Terrific effort, however, 
by the junior Maddie Hayden. Stunning effort. This is actually the cool part about this stadium is that you've got so much foul territory to make a catch like that, to even have the opportunity to make a catch like that. It's a lot of range from Hayden. It's a long strike, 0-2 on the way to Henry. Swing and a miss. A strikeout of Caden Henry, two for her on the day. And Lecker back into the contest with a couple of quick outs here in the third. Bottom of the order's two for two. Leanne Good and Ashton Maloney. Good singled in the second. Pace has slowed down here a little bit after the offensive start to the game when five combined runs scored in the first inning. Good two for 11 so far this year. And Mike White continuing to give her opportunities. Get back into the starting lineup. With this extremely deep squad, but that is the first one, two, three inning worked by Louisiana pitching. Still tied, tied the game at four. And we now head to the fourth inning. Coach White joins us. Coach, uh, what do you make to, to the early start there from Mac Morgan and your team and then fighting back to even things up? Yeah, she really only gave up one hard hit, hard hit ball, but they scored four runs. Uh, they're unfortunate uh, hitting the way we ain't, you know. So <laughs> there was a lot of miss hits, and, uh, but, you know, that's what they do. They've uh, they got good speed, and they came through with a couple of big hits, and we made some plays we shouldn't have made. Coach, we've seen a different urgency, just her getting ahead in the count since the first inning. Was there something she worked on between innings? Uh, no, not really. She just settled down. I mean, it had to be frustrating for her. She was making good pitches, and they were getting yeah. on base, you know. So I, I think she's staying with it. Um, but we'll see how she goes here. Uh, could make a change pretty soon, though. We'll see what happens this evening. Appreciate your time, Coach. Hey, good luck. thank you. Welcome. You heard it from the head coach. Could be a change soon on the way as Mac Morgan about to throw pitch number 60 as we begin inning number four. A little bit of action in the Texas bullpen. First here, Cecilia Vasquez swinging at the first Morgan pitch. One away. Well, sometimes it is just as easy as that as settling in. Here we are overthinking it, thinking she's in the bullpen working like crazy between innings, and that's not the case. Just take an exhale. She got hit hard. That's just part of the game. Saw Simpson and Gutierrez warming up a moment ago. We see Check now heading to the dugout, but we saw this yesterday when Estelle Check against Stanford basically ran to the edge of the infield. Looked like they were going to put her in. They decided not to. Send her back to the bullpen. So we will await the official word. As Morgan stays in there, the count now one and one from Mac Morgan to the catcher, Victoria Valdez. Lines out, two away. And that knee check. Four straight retired now by Morgan. Here comes Kayla Falterman, the junior. Still looking for hit number one on the season. Louisiana just won for their last seven, and that Lone hit was a single. Usually it's the other way around. If Morgan does get hit, and she hadn't this year, it had been in the later innings. She recovers here for a one, two, three frame, a six pitch inning for Mac Morgan. On to the bottom of the fourth, we go. Back 
back up to the top of the order. We head to Bella Dayton. Hitless so far, but still hitting 367 on the year. Corners playing in for Dayton. Each team with six hits so far. Texas trying to rebound, coming off their first loss of the season. That was the first time they had trailed all year, and then they trailed in this one again early. I'm even having to remind myself that we're still tied up. It feels like there's been such a shift and a swing of energy between these two teams. We haven't felt much pressure from Louisiana since the first inning. Shout out to that early Lee when Morgan was falling behind to the first half dozen batters. They cranked out four hits off of her, but not much since then. Here's Dayton Chopper over to second. Lincoln Lears on to first. So Morgan and Lecker having identical fourth innings so far. Neither Dayton or Mia Scott has reached safely so far. Scott grounded out in the first inning. Swings at the first pitch. Davis shielding her eyes from the sun and lost it in the sun. Scott flying around the bases and will head into third and holds up there with two outs here in the fourth inning. Uh, this is well struck. First, you got to give credit where it's due. This is a heck of a stroke by Mia Scott. But this is all sun, an outfielder's worst nightmare. Good thing for the backup. Hayden's able to field this ball immediately and throw it in, but that is going to be a stand-up three-bagger. That is, that's just tough. Second triple tough. of the year for Scott. Both came against this Louisiana team. Go ahead, run it third now for Katie Stewart, who's had the hot bat today, two for two. And Stewart delivers yet again. Texas grabs the 5-4 lead thanks to the freshman. No, that's got to sting. Davis in center field just trying to fight that sun. That stand-up triple gives way for a freshman with a huge stick. Katie Stewart steps in. An RBI single to the right side of the field. That's how you piece it together. You take the opportunities that are given. Reese Atwood has taken advantage of just about every opportunity of this year, and she continues to do so. Atwood and Stewart are both three for three on the day. Just a matter of time before teams just stop pitching to her. I we really saw her mean get that. walked about three or four yes. times yesterday. And, and I really do mean that. There will be a point in this season where she just stops seeing strikes. She stops seeing anything close. I guess at this point, when you limit her to a single that doesn't bring in a run, that's a victory. Victoria Hunter, the freshman, grounds out to end the inning, but Texas takes the lead. And up. Mac Morgan back out in the circle now for inning number five. And diving to the bag is Stewart. She's doing it all. This freshman is just unbelievable defensively, offensively. The speed of Davis, she knew that this was going to be urgent. She was going to have to make a diving attempt if she was going to get this out, and she does. One woman show right now. Meanwhile, this Louisiana offense swinging at every first pitch so far. That one will drop in front of Martinez. This comes down to just communication. This is a ball that has to be caught. Martinez, this is her ball all the way. Shortstop is in control of the infield. Her momentum is coming up through that ball. Sam Rowe delivers base knock. Flying around first is Hayden. She will end up on third. 
The tying run at third, runners on the corners for Louisiana. Well, this is where we saw the pressure start to brew for Texas was the middle of this order. All that run production back in the first inning came from the three, the four, the five, and the six hole hitters for Louisiana. And that's exactly who we're about to see. Well, they were thinking about. She'll get on you quick, has a tremendous off-speed pitch. She'll work low in the zone with an off-speed drop. She worked hard in the off-season. Her and Coach Mike White working on cleaning up just the timing in the circle. Comes in with runners on first and third, and the first pitch misses to Samantha Grader. The coach worked with her about just getting set, settling down before the pitch. So there was just a lot of bouncing and a lot of movement before the ball was thrown, and it just kept her off balance. It has her counting to three before yeah. she makes that movement to try and settle things down, but she falls behind 2-0 to the cleanup hitter, Grader, who's already singled and knocked in a run in the first. You can see that three count lean. She shifts the weight back, really just gets her mind and her body set. Greater and charging in to make the grab is Mia Scott for a big second out. No hesitation from the third baseman. We may have a pitch hitter or at least re-entering the contest is Laney Crater. Ellistad took her place in the third. Crater delivered an RBI single in the first inning to make it 3-0. Two on, two away for the Ragin' Cajuns. Tying run at third. Swing and a miss. Sitlali Gutierrez, 10 strikeouts on the year, a couple of walks. Just two earned runs allowed on the season. Blows another one past her. lays off that one. Gutierrez, the Big 12 Pitcher of the Week. Again, had the huge win against Tennessee in Clearwater. Trying to keep Louisiana from tying it up. We're taking the lead here. Just getting a piece of that one was Crater. Scott has to hurry the throw in time. Mia Scott hustling over from third to preserve the one-run lead for Texas. Snapshots of the Ragin' Cajuns who are trying to improve their record against ranked teams just one and seven so far on the season against top 25 clubs like Texas, Stanford, Mississippi State, and Baylor. And right now, Jerry Glasgow said we, we have gone from really wanting to win those contests to now having must-win games against non-ranked teams to improve our record as Vivi Martinez leads off the bottom of the fifth inning with a base hit for Texas. Those are always my favorite type of swings as a lefty was just slicing one right up the middle of the infield. Feels so good. Especially lead off the inning, Vivi Martinez working her way on. This is only a one-run ball game, guys. This game is not out of reach for Louisiana, so insurance runs late in the game here for Texas. So important. That was Martinez's first hit of the contest. Here's Caden Henry over two with a couple of strikeouts. Rowe playing in at third. 
And they count 2-0 now from Lecker. That's the right call for third base to be pinched in, knowing that Henry has struggled at the plate, knowing they're probably pushing to get another insurance run here. You might see the short game. It's a safe bet. For the last five Texas hitters have gotten a base knock off of Lecker. One of the beneficiary of a ball being lost in the sun, but regardless, Texas starting to break through a little bit against her. Six hits, a couple of runs scored, and two and two thirds. Off to Nally Lecker, the transfer from Iowa. There's that bun attempt. See if Rowe backs up now. The two strike count, she stays firm. Swing and a miss. Third strikeout for Henry. Leanne Good on the way now in the eighth spot for Texas. Martinez still over at first. Good came up with a single in the second. Texas out hitting Louisiana 10-8. Good over to short. That one bobbled again by Vasquez. This one a hot shot. Vasquez does get her body in front of this, but kicks off the heel. She has been challenged all day today. This hasn't been a hot day for her at the shortstop position. Couple of errors. Here's Ashton Maloney taking strike one. One of the two runs Lecker has allowed was earned. Here's the 0 1 with the corners playing in on Maloney. Maloney, not only so good last year, but even in Big 12 play, facing some great pitching from OU and Oklahoma State, still hit 372 in conference play. Coming into today, a 400 hitter. Started all 12 games. Checks the one, two over to first, runners advance. Can't overstate the importance of that nine hole. Serving as a second leadoff, turning this lineup over. One through nine for Texas, Alex. There is not a weak link. There is no weakness in this order. That's why they came into the tournament with the number one batting average in the nation. Yes. Mike White has called it probably the deepest team he's had since he arrived. I mean, just looking at today, Caden Henry struggled at the plate, three strikeouts. But guess what her average was coming into this game? Almost 700. 567 in 10 games. I mean, as a freshman. National Freshman of the Week. Two on, two away. Bella Dayton watches the count go 2-0. Martinez at third, good on its second. And there is a strike from Lecker. Bases, Texas's offensive numbers just absolutely phenomenal. Three one hit over to second. Langoliers big out over to first. Texas leaves two in scoring position. On to the sixth inning we go. Still a one run con. Longhorns will play the final two contest. 
So many invitationals. Who's in charge of naming those? That would not be me. Lone Star, Longhorn. There was a Bevo Classic a before. Bevo, a Texas Invitational. A little bit of everything. You're, you're missing out next week and you're not here for that? I'm so sad. Sure, you don't want to fly in? I will be in Norman calling their first oh, game in their new stadium. That's right. $50 million facility. Unbelievable. Uh, Long time coming. It's been a lot of newness right here in Texas, too. Constant renovations here, not only to the ballpark, outside the ballpark in the left field, the grad student housing. As Gutierrez fresh off retiring the first batter, Langoliers. It's Cecilia Vasquez to foul off one. Got that new stadium ready just in time for SEC play next year. Got to walk through it back, gosh, that would have been late November during football season. It was just sticks and bricks, barely getting it up enough to walk through. And it was impressive then. So I can only imagine how impressive it will be next week when the doors open. It's no Longhorn Invitational, but still a big <laughs> moment. I do love some Austin, Texas. I always enjoy myself when I get to come to UT. There is a called strike to Vasquez. Couple of hits in the last inning for Louisiana. They threatened. Still within striking distance, obviously, as Gutierrez with the one two. The Vasquez, who's 0 for 2, but there is hit number one for her on the day. Tying run over at first. Raging Cajuns continue to fight back. Here comes Victoria Valdez, the catcher, lined out in the fourth. It's an important part of this order for Sitlali Gutierrez. Bottom two hitters here yet to get a hit. You go back up to the top. Maya Davis go. has a couple of hits. Hayden has two as well. Rowe reached. Yeah, I, I mean, truly, it's getting to the point where the last two, it is to the point where the last two in this order, who she faces now, Valdez and Falterman. Yeah, they're going to review that last play. We were due. We hadn't had a review in a few innings now, so it's about that time. Let's get a look. Waiting the official revert, uh, word to see if you see the it's review there, if the runner tipped. left. No foul tip. Or did the runner leave early? We saw Stanford head, head coach Jessica Allister. You can see umpire behind the plate here. He does throw his hands up. Does appear contact is made. This is a foul ball, though I, I can see where it gets tricky. As far as leaving early, it looks clean to me. Not close enough to overturn anything. Here's another great look. Yeah, that looks clean. I don't see anything, anything there that would warrant a call. We're still waiting on word to see exactly what is under review. And this is an official review, so this is between umpires. This is not initiated by either team. This is not a challenge. No change in the call, it will stand. There you go. There you go. So the count 0-1 to Victoria Valdez. 
Vasquez over at first. Swing and a miss. Off nine hits, a couple of errors for Louisiana. Texas five, ten, and one. Chopped over to second. Good waits for it on to second for one over to first in time. The Longhorns defense comes up big when it matters most. Well, but not quite yet. We will have a challenge from Louisiana. A lot of conversation happening at home plate. I don't think there will be a review. Texas players came back out onto the field. Jerry Glasgow went over to initially signal that he was going to challenge. We'll clean it up when we... Here comes the heart of the order that has absolutely broken through today against Louisiana pitching. Katie Stort and Reese Atwood six for six on the afternoon. What a day for Stewart. Wow. Three for three day. RBI. Yeah, reached in 11 straight games. To put a freshman right in the middle of this talented lineup, right in the three spot. Not feeling the pressure, delivering. Came up with a hit last night against Stanford as well. Associate head coach Steve Singleton communicating with Stewart. Three singles for the freshman, drove in a run in the fourth inning. And that run still holding up. The count goes two and two. Singleton's squad. That offense he has coached up over the last few years. Ten hits on the day. One run rule victory this weekend over Colorado State. Locked in a tight one here with Louisiana. Katie Stewart reaches for the fourth time in this one. Patient eye. And you're seeing the ball so well. It's like a beach ball. You want to take your hacks, but being patient pays its dividends as well. That'll bring up Reese Atwood. Another three for three day. No home runs, so I guess if you're Denali Lecker, that's, that's a positive. Win. Three singles. Take strike one. Atwood just two home runs shy of her total from a season ago. Takes one to deep center field. Davis looks up and it's off the wall. Atwood with hit number four. Stewart heading for third. Runners on the corners. Make that a four for four day. Unreal. Unbelievable. Shocked that she's still seeing strikes at this point. One of the hottest bats in the nation. 
ricochets off center field wall and the bounce off of that padding gives way for Stewart to find it all the way to third base. It's as long of a single as you can hit. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Reese Atwood replaced at first by Adele Wallace. Stored in Atwood reaching eight times today. Here's Victoria Hunter walked in the first inning, chops one over to short. They go home and get stored at the plate. Nice tag by Valdez. Without getting too convoluted, this is the right call. Runners at first and third, you want to see that play being forced to be made at home, but you would like to see your runners again ending up at first and third. Instead, they're only standing at first and second. This is a play that you work on endlessly in and, practice. And hindsight's 20 because you had the moment last night against Stanford yes. where Mike White was waving Mia Scott home and she and held she up. She holds up, right. You never know. Stort tagged out or remains a one-run game. Because think about this. You make the sure out at first base. That's an easier play to make, and you end up in the same situation. A couple runners in scoring position and an easy out made at first. So take the harder out. Make them tag you at home plate. And hats off to Louisiana. They get it done. Valdez, very good defensive catcher, keeps it a one-run game. Count one and two, with now two away to Vivi Martinez, who singled in the fifth. Swing and a miss, and an inning-ending strikeout. So here we go, seventh inning on the way, Louisiana. Of stuff, 70 mile an hour. Up in the zone, can move the ball. What an addition to the staff. She's got a heck of an arm. 14 straight scoreless innings by Kavan. And it will be a different batter here. Denali Lecker, the pitcher, hitting in place of Kayla Falterman. Lecker can do some damage with the bat. During her career at Iowa, 24 home runs, 102 RBIs. One away here in the seventh. On had a career high nine Ks in four innings against Tennessee. That was back when Tennessee was the number two team in the nation. As a freshman. Maya Davis, Sunbelt Freshman of the Year, up at the plate. Two for three on the day. Swings at the first pitch, Stewart tosses it, not in time. Tying run at first. Alex, you and I have gushed about the speed of Davis in that leadoff position. It is so hard to defend. This is perfectly placed. Stewart has to come across the body, has to come across the field to field that ball and not in time for good to make it to first and catch that toss. That is a great spot for Davis. Yep. Stole 52 bases a year ago to lead the nation. She's over at first. Conversations will take place on both sides. Maddie Hayden coming up. She's got a couple of hits. And she will face Tegan Kavan, who has a talk with Patty Ruth Taylor in the circle and Reese Atwood. What an addition Patty Ruth has been to this coaching staff. First season at UT, assistant coach, calls pitches, just has been a fearless add to the coaching staff, has really helped with the heavy lifting of Mike White and the pitching staff. Ready to go here with Davis over at first. Representing the tying run, Maddie Hayden at the plate. There's a strike from Kavan. Oh, 
26 strikeouts and four walks to start Kavan's career. And the count will go 0-2. Davis at first, three stolen bases on the year. Hayden, a couple of singles today, fights one off. Hayden singled back in the first. That was a part of that four run tear to start this game for Louisiana. This is the part of the lineup that gave him fits. Over to Martinez, on to first, and the raging Cajuns down to their last out. What a play by Vivi Martinez to field it cleanly. Whew. The trust you've got to have in that leather, baby. I think her eyes were closed fielding this. I love the charge, the momentum through this ground ball. But that's the risk you got to take with the speed of the top of this order. A beautiful play by Martinez. Tying run at second, two away in the seventh. Sam Rowe, the transfer from Florida, fouls one back. She was one of the elite recruits in the nation coming out of high school. Top five recruit in the country. During two years with the Gators at 288. Batting 250 this season with the Ragin' Cajuns. Swing and a miss. What a devastating off speed, a 58 mile an hour off speed, low in the zone, paired with that high heat. Fans on their feet. Over to third, Scott on to first. There's your ball game, Texas hangs on for the 5-4 win. Longhorns with five runs off 11 hits, one error, Louise.